Welcome back to another edition of Stand on Guard. I'm your host, David Creighton. And when we come back, I want to share a story so incredible, you'll find it hard to believe. So we are in a very precarious position in this country. We need political change, but we also need the resolve to resist. Yes, please resolve to resist, but please also support this station. Like it, subscribe if you haven't. And I understand YouTube can have you unsubscribe, so make sure you are subscribed if you want to be. We appreciate it. And like this broadcast as soon as possible so we can beat the YouTube algorithm. It's it's really hard to break into that next spectrum because that's where we need to be to get to get this message out. And we can't do it without you. So please tell your friends and family about this. And like Sasha demonstrates, ring that bell. Really appreciate your support. It means so much to you. So what's my incredible tale? The U.S. southern border. It's incredible. Did you know that as we speak, there is a convoy approaching the Texas-Mexico border and other parts of the U.S. southern border? This is some shots of it right there. What does that remind you of as a Canadian? Freedom Convoy 2022, two years ago. As the Freedom Convoy arrived in Ottawa, trucks coming into the city. Well, this is happening in the United States right now. And you can see the response just as there was in Canada. People on the road, on overpasses, on bridges, cheering, welcoming the convoy as they get to their destination in Texas. So what's in Texas? What's happening there? Well, I can't be more emphatic to say this has taken three years. Three years ago, President Joe Biden was inaugurated. And in those three years, he has maintained an open border across the entire United States. The United States has no border, has no border. I mean, and this is a truly astounding, astounding thing. So you saw some of the footage. What's the lead up to it? What's going on? Why are all these people going to the southern border? Well, you can you can see from this that take our border back. Everybody expects to get there by February 3rd. It's a long trip. And this campaign is called Take Our Border Back. Now, if I had told you that a place like America, that always prided itself on its sovereignty, was always prepared to go to war to protect that sovereignty, would have no sovereignty at its southern border for three straight years, and that literally millions, millions, tens of millions now, over 10 million, illegal immigrants have walked across the border and been sent transported by the Department of Homeland Security and by border guards across the United States. And they're now living as illegals with government benefits. You think that, no, something that can only happen in Canada. No, it has happened in the United States. And the ramifications for Canada are just as profound. Because if the United States cannot protect its borders, if it's under the auspices and control of globalist politicians like Joe Biden, just as Canada is under the auspices and control of a globalist politician named Justin Trudeau, then none of us are safe. So what's happening now at the southern border? Finally, finally, after three years, Americans have said enough. We need some sovereignty. We need a real border. We can't have anybody just walk across the southern border, bringing fentanyl, that's another attendant issue, problem that is happening because of these illegals 
flocking across the border. There are terrorists amongst them. And these aren't just a bunch of people from Mexico who decided they wanted a better life in the United States. These immigrants, these migrants, these illegals are coming from all over the world, including China. And we'll see more about that later. If you want evidence, we got it. So what's happening here? Texas Governor Greg Abbott, who has always been suspect from small C conservatives, libertarians, as being someone who's not really with the cause, doesn't really want to stop the illegal immigration, is just doing his best to look like he wants to do so. And some people even go so far as to say he's in the pocket of the World Economic Forum. I don't know. Sometimes I like Greg Abbott. Sometimes I don't. But he might be an instrument of history. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes people become instruments of history, whether they want to or not, whether they want had it planned that way, whether they're willingly doing it or not. History takes over. Whether you want to say it's providence of the hand of God or you just want to say it's the movement of history. That often happens. People become a part of history. And Governor Greg Abbott seems to be there right now because he's saying, I can't do it anymore. The Supreme Court recently said that the federal government had a right to take down the barbed wire, the razor wire that the state of Texas had put into place. And you can see it in this picture here. This And, and this quotes Greg Abbott saying that the governors have come together in solidarity. And here's the razor wire that the federal government went to the Supreme Court with a request that they could take it down. Now, this is how bizarre that gets. This is how bizarre things get, because why do you want to take the razor wire down? I mean, what's what's going on here? Well, here's the national security flack Admiral John Kirby, who has been one of the most nonsensical idiots on the public affairs scene ever since we first saw his mug during the Afghanistan withdrawal, when he looked like he hadn't got a clue in his head what was going on or why. Here he is talking to Fox News, Washington White House correspondent Peter Ducey about what's going on at the southern border. And I'll comment about this after. Why are you guys making it easier for people to enter the country illegally? I don't believe we are. Why do you think we are? Well, you guys sued to cut razor wire that was put in place by Texas officials. So that the Border Patrol could actually do their jobs, but keep going. Well, you won in court, so now what? The Border Patrol Union president is saying the Supreme Court's decision is going to undoubtedly encourage more illegal immigration. Do you guys know better than the Border Patrol Union? The Border Patrol needed access, and that's why we sued to get rid of that uh, razor wire, so that they could do their jobs. And you know what would also help them do their jobs, Peter? More Border Patrol agents. There's an idea. And if you go back to the supplementary request that we put in, there's money in there for some 1,300 additional Border Patrol agents. We want to help them do their jobs. We want to give them more resources. And the answer we kept get, keep, keep getting back from House Republicans is no, no, no. Does razor wire work? Does razor wire work for what? Does it work for the Border Patrol to allow them to have the access they need to be able to uh, to better process people that are uh, trying to get across the border? I don't think so, and that's why we asked for it to be removed. For the Border Patrol to allow them to have the access they need to be able to uh, to better process people that are uh, trying to get across the border? I don't think so, and that's why we asked for it to be removed. But what is the president's plan? This is happening just weeks after 300,000 people came into this country over the southern border illegally. The razor wire officials down there think was keeping some of them out. And you guys just sued and won to remove it. On, on behalf of the Border Patrol who needed, who needed to have better access to it. Look, let me go back to your other question. And I, I, I know I'm running short on time, so I, I, won't, I won't filibuster here, but what's the plan? 
please look at the stuff we've put forward, the immigration reform uh, legislation that the president put forward on day one, the work we're doing in the region. Just last week, we had uh, Mexican officials here to talk about how together we have and will continue to try to stem the flow of migrants. You mentioned the, the numbers. No question there's a lot of people trying to make that journey, but it's not just to the United States, it's to other countries in the world, in the, in the region. We're seeing historic movement. Not, not since World War II have we seen this many people on the move in this hemisphere. And the Mexicans are really stepping up and trying to do the more, the, more on their southern border to keep that flow going north lower. And, and we have seen in recent weeks some success at that. The, the, the idea that we don't have a plan or a strategy or we're not taking this seriously is just not borne out by the facts. And, you know, again, if the, if, if the folks in the, on the House Republican side are, are serious about border security, and they claim they are, then they should act on the supplemental request and, you know, let's negotiate this in good faith. The president has said he's willing to make uh, compromises. He's willing to negotiate in good faith. So, so let's, let's have that t discussion. Okay, so what's he saying? That the border guards are there to help bring illegals across the border. I mean, that's outrageous. But of course, we've heard this before from this administration. They don't seem to think there's any any problem with this. And they seem to think that this is not against the law, that illegal immigration is not against the law, that you can be Ill illegal and that's fine. That's somehow not the issue. So what has happened here? We have got a coalition of governors, a coalition of states that are saying, we can't handle this anymore. Now, this looks a lot like another group in history, and I'm, I, I, don't, I don't really want to make the comparison, but if there is such a thing as a new confederacy, this looks like it. But it's a confederacy that's not trying to break up the United States. It's trying to preserve the United States as a sovereign country with legitimate borders. It's unifying around a theme of keeping the United States together, not trying to break it apart. So this coalition of states and governors is saying no to the federal government because the federal government is destroying America. The federal government is, is the, the party behind this unity. It's destroying American sovereignty. So this is, this is very important. Very important, very important to notice here. And I think it's, I, I think it's an historic time. Let's listen to what Tucker Carlson uh, had, had to say about this. You need to understand, Yale University released a study last week by three researchers, all of them liberal, I believe, who concluded that the actual number of illegal aliens in this country is not 11 million, it's north of 22 million. 22 million. Mm. Fact one. Fact two. The Democratic Party is now, as a matter of policy, calling for the legalization of all illegals in this country. Citizenship voting rights. 22 million new voters. Fact mm -hmm. three, the overwhelming majority of first-time immigrant voters vote Democrat. Fact four, the largest margin in American presidential history was 17 million votes. 1980 election, rather, 1984 election between Mondale and, and, and Reagan. And Reagan, yeah. 17 million. You would add to our voter rolls 22 million at least permanent electoral majority in perpetuity. That's what this is about. It's not about making the country better, serving our labor needs, helping the population. It's about putting Dang. Democrats in power forever. Are that you, is the yeah. truth of our immigration debate. That's what it comes down to. It's bringing in all of these people who the Biden administration thinks and assumes are going to vote Democrat. It's about completely upending the population of the United States. So this is absolutely fascinating. You want to see how bad it is? Here's, here's a segment of Redacted from December that shows you the chaos at the border. And this is absolutely fascinating. The fact that Doc is watching right now, I followed that train track about an hour down into Mexico, and that's the train actually that you know that 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 we just saw uh, Anthony Rubin was on, right? Uh, very dangerous, the beast they call it. Yeah, yeah. Phil, that, that Phil. train, that train. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. No, I was, I was just saying we were in a little bit of a delay here, you and El Salvador, uh, but it was filled, right? I mean, that train is filled with illegal migrants coming across. Is that the same train? It is. It is. I mean, it's just. It's 
It looks like India sometimes, you know, I spent a year in India, you know, sometimes the trains are just covered with people and that's the way it is now. Can I ask you this? So we're talking about, right, we're talking to you on a day when the Biden administration is putting together a coalition of the willing, you know, it sounds familiar like the, you know, invasion of Iraq, 10 countries, Western nations sending over 30 warships, 30 ships to the Red Sea to make sure that trade uh, can flow uh, and, you know, looks like probably attacking Yemen and attacking Houthi rebels in Yemen. And so we're, we're concerned about international trade in the Red Sea and the Suez Canal. But here we literally have we have our own uh, we have uh, our own train infrastructure, Union Pacific, telling us that 45 percent of all the cars can't get through. They're having to slow down agricultural products coming in, food and beverages, automotive, consumer goods, industrial commodities, talking metals, cement. We're talking dry food products, beer, grain uh, held in Midwest states that are being. So this is all being shut down. We're sending 30 ships to the Middle East. And yet international trade on our southern border is being halted. I mean, do you not see the hypocrisy? I mean, I know you see the hypocrisy here, but I'm just absolutely furious about this. Actually, I mean, I watch your show all the time, by the way. I was just watching it when we were driving three hours yesterday through El Salvador. There was actually a good signal, believe it or not. Watch it. You're getting it dead on accurate. And that's what's bothersome because I'm always downrange also in Europe and the other parts of the world watching this. This is not hypocrisy. They are actually trying to destroy the United States. World Economic Forum is crystal clear what they're doing. So you can see here the just the endless stream of people. And this has continued. This this has continued. So So it's all very interesting and this is uh this takes us to the next video. I, I really, really think this is uh this is important to see because it's very much one of the best documentaries I've seen on the border crisis. And it's produced by two young guys who run a YouTube site called Muckraker. It's also on X. And these these guys have done a phenomenal job. They put their life in danger doing this documentary. They could have been killed by the cartels on the way back. They could have been killed along their journey from Ecuador to the Texas-Mexican Texas border. Anywhere along that line, they could have been killed and nobody would have been punished for it. Nobody would have been caught for it because it's a lawless line of migrants. People from all over the world who are just getting into the United States. And I think it's I want you to watch this and we'll watch as much of it as possible because it is fascinating what's going on. Three, nearly a quarter million illegal aliens entered the United States every month. Nearly all of these illegals follow the same mass migration trail that starts in Quito, Ecuador and ends at the U.S. southern border. So, we decided to follow the trail ourselves. Along the way, we discovered secret Chinese staging hotels, crossed through the world's deadliest jungle, embedded with an illegal alien caravan, rode the Mexican train of death, and finally were kidnapped by the Gulf Cartel, just hundreds of feet from the United States border. This video will expose the entire illegal alien pipeline for what it is. A United Nations weaponized migration agenda masquerading as an organic humanitarian crisis. This agenda directly benefits cartels and human smugglers, exposes the United States to incredible geopolitical threats, and could potentially usher in permanent one-party rule. Biden! 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 The first stop along the route is Ecuador. U.S.-bound illegal aliens from all over the world first fly into the capital city of Quito, 
due to the country's easy entry requirements. From here, aliens begin making their way towards Colombia. In the Ecuadorian border town of Tolkien, dozens of government and non-government organizations offer aid and instructions on how to navigate the mass migration trail. This map, provided by the United Nations, shows all of the migration-related organizations in Tolkien. Aliens receive aid in the form of legal assistance, food packages, healthcare, maps, and more. Some of this aid is incredibly bizarre. The United Nations International Organization of Migration, IOM for short, hands out pamphlets detailing how to put on a condom. It is clear that the intent of these organizations is to direct the masses of illegal aliens to the United States. Consider this map, which shows the route from Colombia to the United States, and marks 12 U.S. border crossing points with flags. Many similar maps are distributed by other organizations. This map, distributed by the Red Cross, shows the route from Panama to the United States in painstaking detail. On the back of the map, illegal aliens are encouraged to ride on top of freight trains to reach the United States border. It's worth noting that these maps direct aliens into incredibly dangerous territory, such as the Darien Gap or cartel-controlled areas of Mexico. If this mass migration program were truly for humanitarian purposes, venturing into such territories would be discouraged. Not only are aliens risking their lives by following these instructions, but the United Nations is indirectly helping organized crime earn untold amounts of money by sending millions of people their way to be smuggled. These same criminal organizations notoriously rape women, rob innocent people, and execute their enemies. After crossing into Colombia from Ecuador, the next stop along the route is the city of Pasto. It was here that we discovered a secret staging point for Chinese illegal aliens headed to the United States. So right now we are in Colombia at the Cabanas Rio Mayo Hotel. And this hotel that we stumbled upon by accident is a major hub, a major transit point meeting place for Chinese foreign nationals that are on their way to the United States. And last night when we were here, we were eating at this hotel restaurant and we were the only uh, foreigners that were not Chinese. I mean, the, literally the entire hotel is just Chinese foreigners. Uh, we spoke with the hotel staff here and they confirmed that. And while there are some women and children, it's mostly military aged males. There's some right behind me right now, actually. One thing to note is that among all of the foreign nationals that are entering the United States illegally, the Chinese are among the most well-funded and the most sophisticated in the way they go about getting to the United States. Whereas the Venezuelans, for example, are very poor. They just trek up to the United States on foot in mass caravans. Uh, they don't have much money. Uh, the Chinese are very well funded. They're the ones that are taking planes. We're right across the street from an airport right now. And they also have established networks. And this hotel that we're at is proof of that. It's all Chinese and for some reason they all know to come here. It's because they are in direct communication. People that are further up the trail or that have made it to the United States are telling people that are on their way, hey, this is a hotel that's safe for you. Uh, we also found we are staying at this hotel. You know, they're expecting Chinese. You can see a lot of the writings, a lot of the signs in this hotel are written in Chinese. Again, this is further proof that it's not by accident, it's not just some sort of one-off occasion that there's all of these Chinese nationals here at this point. This is a known hub, a known meeting place for Chinese that are in transit on their way to the United States. We spoke with the Chinese national who's staying here right now, who's going to be trekking through the Darien Gap and going up to the United States. His destination is either New York or Los Angeles, and he told us that there are definitively Chinese spies in the United States. Fascinating. So as you might have noticed this while you're watching the video, Canada is actively facilitating this illegal migration to the United States. Canada is part of this. And this is something we have to acknowledge. And this, I, I, I use this video with the permission of the muckraker duo who put this together. And I encourage you to go and watch this. It is tremendously fascinating because they escape with their lives to give us a story. And I think this documentary has been suppressed on social media because it's, an, it's a tremendous account of how the open border has become an open border, but it's not getting the airplay it should be getting. You know, and I think, I think that is a, is a tragedy. But 
This is a unfolding tale. We are coming to a climax as this trucker convoy, you know, reaches, and you know, as this trucker convoy reaches the southern border, we are reaching a climax because it has been three years of illegal migrants walking across the border and being actively helped and assisted by the Border Patrol under the orders of the Biden administration. And non-governmental organizations have been shipping these people into nearby warehouses where they are being transported around the country. And there have been reports that some of these children have become sex slaves. And these are legitimate reports. But at the very least, the Biden administration is responsible for the unleashing of millions of illegal immigrants into the United States. And these people have no intention of ever showing up for an immigration hearing. And this is why these tens of thousands, I've heard hundreds of thousands of trucks are going to mass at the southern border in the United States because Americans have finally said, we cannot do this anymore. It's time to stop this illegality and this complete cancellation of our sovereignty. You would never have seen this happen in the United States in 1965, in 1985, even 2000. So why is it acceptable in 2024? And it has been for the last three years. Most Americans would say it's not. And Canada has got to stop being a part of the problem here. So I show you that again to illustrate what is going on. What is going on? And we are at a historic juncture here where the states have said, stop, not one step further to a federal government that no longer working for America. I want to make this point very clear again. The Southern, the Southern governors and those, those Midwest governors and all of those Republican governors who are banding together are not sowing the seeds of disunity or discord. They are standing up for American sovereignty. It's the federal government under Joe Biden that refuses to stand up for American sovereignty because he is in the pocket of the globalists. He is working for another agenda. If he even has a thought left in his head, being so deep into dementia, I don't know if he even considers what is right for America anymore. He only considers what the globalist agenda is. He's more concerned about giving billions of dollars to keep the war in Ukraine going than he is about defending his own southern border. That is a historic tragedy. But that's what's happening in the United States today, this week, and into next month. And it's going to continue. And it's going to be the story to watch because Americans are finally rising up on their hind legs and saying, it's over. We're not doing this anymore. Thank you for everybody who's supporting this station. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be an independent journalist who cares and who speaks the truth. As I like to say, you don't get clickbait on this station. I don't tell you things that aren't true. I don't make promises I can't deliver on. I tell you what's reality, what's actually happening. And I have to be consistent in telling the truth. And that's what I commit to doing. So thank you again for supporting this station. Thank you for becoming a member. Thank you for your financial support for those who have done so. We need it. We thank you for it. We are grateful for it. And thank you for continuing to listen, to stand on guard. And I'll be back again with question period today, live from the House of Commons. It's day two with the MPs back from their, what, seven, eight week recess? Yeah, they're back. Actually, I think it was probably six. But they're back. And what do you think they're talking about? Yeah, climate change and the carbon tax. Nothing's changed. But we'll have more about that later. I'll have more, more comment. Thank you for watching today. As always, I'm your host, David Creighton, and I'm here.